All right, so carrying right along, we see that we have created our UV layout in a meaningful way, and it's much more organized than it was before. And now we wanna take a look at doing some additional modeling and baking uh, from one mesh to another. Now, the reason I save this until after we set up the UV layout is because we need UVs for our final model in order to accept the 2D data that we're going to project from a higher density model. Now I know that might not mean anything to you right now, but I will explain it as we go along, so just follow along. So I'm gonna switch over to our solid shaded mode and I'm just gonna collapse this window down because we don't need it right now. I want us to primarily be paying attention to the 3D window. I'm also gonna move over my screencast keys again now that we have a slightly larger window and I'll also hide our reference and I'll just save this real quickly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click onto our model and I'm gonna grab these faces. So hit three to switch to face mode right here. And this, these are gonna be the ridged parts of the top of the bottle or the cap anyways. And I'm gonna hit shift D to duplicate those. And now I'm gonna hit P selection. And you can see we've created a second 3D model here. So switch out to object mode with tab. And this we're going to call conic detail. And we're going to use the details from this model, and I'm gonna say G X five to move it over. And we're going to take this now in edit mode, and we are going to project the details from this model over to this one uh, after we add a significant amount of detail. So right now I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say subdivide, and I'm gonna put this up to say about eight, and I'm gonna change the smoothness to one, and there we go, we have a nice round model there. In fact, I'm gonna move it all the way up to 10. And then what I need to do is go into front view with x-ray mode selected. And I'm just going to go into edge mode with two, and I'm just gonna select all of these horizontal edges like this. You could also use the alt select option there. And the reason why I'm selecting these individually and not up and down is uh, if I do up and down, it's also going to go get these edges in between and I don't want those. I only want the horizontal ones and now I'm gonna hit control X and I'm going to dissolve those and we can leave x-ray mode. I can also get rid of the seam on the side, clear seam, that's not really necessary. And now what I can do is select the whole thing like this and I'm going to say select, check or deselect. And you can see here, actually I wanna do that in face mode, so let's do it again in face mode. Select, check or deselect, and there you go, you can see we have every other face selected here. And now I can hit Alt E and say extrude faces along normals, and I can hold down Shift and I can extrude this inwards, something like this, just a little tiny bit. And you can see here it goes inwards, so it's not protruding out. And then I can also come up to the top here and look for my transform pivot point with the selection selective and say uh, individual origins. And then I can say SX. And you can see now that when I scale this, what it's doing is, so let's look at, look at it from this angle, SX, it's scaling all of these according to the uh, individual origins there. So do so what i could do here is say s shift z and there that's what i'm looking for so it wasn't sx but it was s shift z and i think that these are looking okay i think that looks all right so what i might want to do is apply this weighted modifier right here make sure we have our tonic detail so in object mode this weighted modifier i'm going to hover over this i'm going to say Control a that's going to apply the modifier. And then I'm going to add in a bevel modifier. And I'm going to hold down shift and move the amount down ever so slightly, just so that it's like say 0 0.002. And then we can add in a bunch of extra segments here. Kind of change that. 0 0.005 maybe? Yeah, that looks okay. And that's looking pretty good. Now, one thing that we could also do is look at it from this angle. And with X-ray mode enabled, in face mode, grab the top, shift select the bottom, hit XF to delete those faces. And there we go, we have this entire ridged looking uh, thing going on here. And that looks like the sort of detail that I wanna project over there onto this part of the mesh. Now, normally what I would do is I would move this back, however, I don't want to bake other parts of this model onto here. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to come back over here to our original tonic model. I'm going to save this really quickly. And I'm going to grab face mode. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to shift D and I'm going to project the selection. And then I'm going to, or uh, sorry, detach the selection with the P key. So we're going to separate it. And now we have this tonic zero. We're going to say tonic cap strip. And because we already set out the UV layouts for this, let me show you how this works. I'm going to select this and say GX5. And now these two are overlapping each other. And if I go into the tonic cap strip, you can see here that it's still in its layout place as we had it over here. It's just not connected to the rest of this stuff. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to bake the detail from this very highly detailed one onto just that strip. I don't want any other part of my model to be affected by it. So I'm going to take the tonic detail and I'm actually going to say S shift Z. I'm just going to scale it in holding down shift. So that way, see how it was penetrating through here. You can see that they're overlapping each other and it's kind of creating a problem there. So now if I hit S shift Z and hold down shift and just scale it in ever so slightly it boom, there we go. It's on the inside and that's what I want. So I want to click the detail and then shift click the strip. And you can see here that the detail is in orange and the uh, strip is in a bright yellowish orange. And that means that this is the active one. And we need to come over here to our render properties. We're going to change our render engine from EV to cycles. Now make sure that you have an appropriate, let's go to the preferences, an appropriate system setup here. We want to be using some th something for CUDA or optics here. We need to make sure that we have a GPU that can do this or a CPU that can do this. Um, generally speaking, if you're running this, you have a CPU that can do it. It just might take a little bit longer or, uh, you know, it could, it could take longer. So we're going to close that up and I'm going to set my, both my render and viewport settings to two here in the sampling. And I'm going to change my device to GPU compute. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom right here to bake and I'm going to look for some bake settings. Now we need to do a little more setup, but first we're going to try to, we're going to switch our bake type from combine to normal. There we go. And then we're going to say selected to active. So remember we have the selected tonic detail is going to bake onto the active tonic cap strip. And we're also going to give it a margin of four pixels. So it's a little bit tighter in, it's not as big of a margin. And that's going to be the good, uh, good setup for that. Now we need to open up this down here and we need to create another one of these nodes here that we have generated through the side panel in our material properties. But the way we're going to do it is we can say add, or we can do shift a here and say search. And we're going to type in image texture. Alternatively, we could also just duplicate this one here and clear it out, but I want to create a new one. So here we go an image texture. We're going to hit new. We're going to call this tonic underscore normal. Same settings, 1024 by 1024. We're going to switch this generated type to blank and make sure alpha is turned off and say OK. And make sure that this is selected. Switch this color space to non-color. And then one more thing that I want to do in my render property setting is switch my color management. We're going to say sequencer sRGB. We're going to switch it to linear. And the reason why we do that is so that way when it bakes the detail, it's going to bake it um, in a way that is relevant to how we're going to use it later. And I'll explain that when we get to that point. So I know that that was a lot. Pause the video and rewind it and make sure you're following along with it so that you know what's happening. I'm going to open up the side panel over here. Just kind of zoom this out a little bit so we can see all of this. So make sure this is selected. Make sure that we have these two selected in the same way. And then we have this open. Now we're going to come back to our render properties. We're going to find the bake section, making sure that all these settings are the same. We're going to hit bake and you'll see that we get a progress there. And you can see here, this image has changed. And now we have some texture detail that has been baked onto this strange looking purple map. And that is going to be saved right into this. And we need to, before we head any further, come up to here on the image and say, save as, and that's going to open up our tonic project. And we're going to have tonic normal, and we're just going to save it as it is. And so now that that image is saved, we don't have to worry that if Blender crashes or we close it, that that image is going to disappear on us. And then we'll have to set it all up and bake it again. Now, fortunately for us, we have it saved. So make sure that you're actually saving that. So now that we've done this, 
We can actually delete both of these or hide them. I'll just hide them for now in case we want to reference them later. I'm going to open this back up a little bit more, just like this, zooming out like that. And then we'll switch over to our material preview. I'm going to hit the N key. And then what I'm going to do is I will disconnect the tonic UV grid and I'm going to move this tonic normal down. I'm going to move the tonic UV grid back and save it. And you can see here that we now have the tonic normal and you can see on the material that we created, we have a normal slot. Well, we can't connect these directly because as you can see, this color is yellow and the normal is purple. We need another node in between. So we're going to hit shift A and we're going to say search and we're going to look for normal and we want the normal map here. And now we can put this in between and you can see here we can connect, connect this color to the normal map and from the normal map to normal. And if we have done this correctly, you can see here now that the detail from that high resolution mesh has been baked onto our mesh up here. And I can make this a little bit easier to view by taking our base color and turning it down to a darker color and maybe even taking the roughness and turning it down. I'll explain what some of those values are later. And you can see now we have that detail that has been baked there. Even though if we go into edit mode, you can see we don't have all that extra geometry, but we do have the detail that's baked there. And then of course, if I add a subdivision surface modifier, it gets even more detailed and smoothed out. So very useful to know how to take high density detail and convert it from one mesh over to another by turning it into 2D information. Um, and the way that we did that was very methodical to avoid having some issues here. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, well, how is this all being calculated under the hood? And to be completely honest, um, I can't really explain it that well off the top of my head. There are some people who do it on YouTube better. But to give you the short um, sort of explanation is this purple map is a combination of three different black and white maps in the red, blue, and green channels that each indicate a different direction in 3D space. And the way that the computer knows to shade the polygons that we have in, in our mesh is based on those three different directions right here. And so it looks funny. It looks like this weird purple pinkish map and it just know that it's the computer interpreting three different grayscale value maps in order to determine how the light should be cast across the surface of the mesh. Now we can actually edit this map here. And the way that we would do that is selecting the bottle, go into our texture paint area here. And you can see now that that mesh is on the, the mesh has the projected detail. And then we also have it here. Um, it looks like this bake wasn't the best bake and that could be due to a number of issues. Uh, I'm actually not going to stress the, the fixing of it in, in terms of this because it, it works more or less. But I will show you how to clean it up a little bit in here. So here we have, we can paint. And so if I paint, it's white. You can see here that there's, there's the color up there. Um, and we have a bunch of settings. You know, we have our brush radius, which is our size. We can manipulate that with the F key. And then strength, which is how much it's going to put down. So right now it's at 100% strength or one strength. We set it down to 0.1, it's gonna be 10%. So let's undo that. And then of course we can manipulate that with shift F you can see here. So let's put that back up and we have some pressure sensitivity if you want to use a tablet. And then we have the stroke, which is what we're going to change. So normally it's set to space. We're going to change this to a line and that will allow us to draw a line that the brush will follow. And then now what we want to do is I'm going to tap the S key over this purple color. I'm going to scale my brush down very small and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and just grab this point here and draw a line all the way across. Just like so. I'm going to do it a couple of times. And then we'll do the same on the bottom here just to kind of clean up that sort of fade there. Maybe a little more on the top as well. Just like so. And so now we have a little bit of a better fade on those sorts of uh, ridge detail. And then of course we need to come back up here and say image and save, and then go back to our layout. And you can see here that we've kind of cleaned that up a little bit. It doesn't look as strange as it once did, uh, at least on the edges. That's kind of an artifact that you can get from texture baking. I'm gonna go back and hit this bottom bit a little bit. I seem to have missed an area here. So let's scale this brush up and just and I come across here like that. And there we go. That looks like I've gotten everything that needed to be 
to be fixed and we're going to hit save and go out to our layout here and there we go so that is how you bake and correct a normal map now this tonic uv grid we're probably going to end up not using it so i'll just move this over to the side we can eventually delete that or just get rid of it um, the next thing that we need to do now is come back to our uv edit mode here so if i go into edit mode here you can see the uvs show up again and what i want to do here is i want to create a map that will help me identify the different parts of my model this is not 100 percent necessary if you have a better memory or know how this is laid out um, it becomes easier to do this without doing it but this will also help other people with the creation of different maps and things like this so what we're going to do is we're going to create a color id map or just an id map that will identify for us the different parts of our model so i happen to know that I want the label to have one specific type of texture. The surface of the bottle will have a glass-like texture and the cap will have a plastic-like texture. So each of these three need to have a, a different identifier for them in order for me to determine that. I can use it in an application such as Substance Painter or Quixel Mixer and it's really useful to have and it can also help you identify the parts of your model as long as you were there for the setup and or have a key that kind of tells you uh, what goes where. So the way that we're gonna do this is in edit mode, I'm just going to go into face mode and I'm gonna hit L over this and make sure that we're set to normal. And this is going to be the cap. So I need to come in here and I need to create another and let's just duplicate one. So we'll duplicate this tonic normal move this up and hit the X here to clear it out. And I'm going to hit new and I'm going to say tonic underscore ID. And again, same settings as before. And this one can be left at sRGB because it is going to be a color map. And we're just going to drag the color from up here to over here. And you can see it's completely black. Now, if we switch to texture paint, there's this button now in our 3D viewport. It says paint mask. We'll click that. And now we can set a specific color. So let's make this a, a nice turquoise color. And I can grab the paint bucket and just fill that there. And for some reason, it didn't give me the turquoise color. So let me switch back to there. And there we go. It gave me the turquoise color. And you can see it's filling that there. Sometimes it misses an area. So it may be necessary to come in, grab that color by tapping S, scaling this down with F, and then just dragging over the top of it like this. We can also set our stroke from line back to space. And there we go. We can fill that in. The rest of it looks okay ish there's one white there we don't want that and the reason why i'm doing this um this uh, primarily i'm just going to use this to identify the sections of the mesh but if you use this in quixel mixer for example you want all the colors to be consistent because uh, a program like that or a substance designer or something else will actually use these specific colors to identify the differentiation between the different um materials that you're going to apply to this and ideally you want them to be 100 percent of their strength you don't want to have anything in between so for this one i'm going to paint this black and it may be a little bit difficult to do this in blender but there we go so now it's 100 percent either one color or another um, we want it to be very very clear to the computer exactly what it is we're trying to say because it will interpret that white as another uh, sort of material and we don't want that um, usually if it's just one pixel, maybe it'll ignore it. I'm not exactly sure how they set it up in each case, but generally speaking, you want to have it as, uh, defined as possible. So there we go. We've set the cap to be one color. Let's tab out and now we'll set the body as another. So again, we'll, we can, uh, tab back and forth between the two modes. And now we have this set. So we're going to hit the paint bucket. We're going to change this to say a pinkish color or maybe a magenta, and we're going to paint that there. And I'm going to examine it really quickly. And then we can see that there are some spots here and there. So again, grab that color, fix your brush up. Just fill those in. Just to make sure we're not missing anything. I think that looks pretty good for the most part. Yes, yes. I'm just looking for any errors or anything the computer missed. And then the last part we need is the label. Of course, we'll grab the label and we'll make this a nice red color. So tap in and we'll make this something like that, maybe a little deeper of a red. Here, I'll do this. There we go. Make it a deeper red color. And 
we will undo that, use our paint bucket, just like that. And there we go. And then we'll check here again for any missed parts. Uh, this layout, fortunately, is pretty good, although right here we had we did have a miss, so let's clean that up. Make this larger. Go. Oh, we got one there. So this is just me being somewhat neurotic. Or somewhat uh, specific, maybe a little OCD, as I am known to be. From time to time. And this isn't really necessary, but it's going to bother me if I don't fix it, so we'll do that. Whoops. There you go. All right, looking good. And so this will be our color ID map. So we're going to go ahead, image, save as, and we're going to save tonic ID right there. And now we go back into our layout and you see we got these funky colors. We can just disconnect this. And now what this is going to do is let's go in here, select the whole thing. We get our UV layout, say UV, export UV layout and say tonic underscore UV layout with a capital L save that and that what that's going to do is it's going to create uh, an image that has these UVs laid out so we can see where our image is going and so now we can kind of use the colors and the UV layout to identify the different parts of the model as we create this map so now that we are basically done with all of our UV stuff so to speak um, we can actually kind of uh, I think we can actually close this left side now but before I can do that I need to this and this let's open the shader network up in the bottom again and there we go so i probably don't need the color id or the uv grid anymore so i'll just delete them they still exist inside of blender's system here if i if i opened up another image editor here i can show you real quickly and just do another uv image editor and open this up you can see that the normal map is still there the uv grid still there the id map is still there etc and so they're they're all still there um we're just not using them as nodes so just keep that in mind so now what we need to do is we need to shift gears let's move this from material preview you can see here we've got our normal map and we've got this going on but we need to now create the label and the colors for the surface of our maps there 